So what materials will you need to make your own decorative pumpkin bookmark? Well, you're going to need an orange and a green yarn, and then whatever color you would like the background to be on your bookmark. So here is how mine looks, and these are the colors that I used for it. So I used the Stitch 101 Acetate yarns from Hobby Lobby, they're Yarn Bee yarns, and the colorways of Copper Penny, Kale, and Golden Tweed. You're also going to need a five millimeter hook, some scissors, And if you would like to use them, you can have a stitch marker and potentially a darning needle. So the way that we work up our bookmark is we're gonna work a single crochet foundation chain. Now, if you don't want to work a single crochet foundation chain, you can simply chain and then go through and do single crochets. But a single crochet foundation chain knocks out chaining and doing your single crochets at the same time. So the way that you're gonna measure the length that you want is by taking your book and you're gonna to wanna to make this uh, basically we're making a big loop. You're going to want to make this loop the right size to slip over your book, uh, over the front cover and over however many pages, so that you can use it to mark your pages and this pattern uh, design will lay over the front. So let's say that, let's say that this little pad of sticky notes was my book. I would want my chain to be the right length to go over this, through the book, and then back around because it's going to be a big circle and it'll be worked like this. So it would basically be a chain that looked like this. So I hope that helps you to figure out how to size your bookmark and we can go ahead and begin. So we're going to go ahead and do a single crochet foundation chain. Um, my first one that I did is absolutely ginormous and I can use it for an extremely large um, coffee table book. Sorry, I started to make a magic circle for some reason. Um, I can use it for a coffee table book, uh, like a really big coffee table book, but it is definitely much larger than uh, a normal book. And I did 87 um, single crochet foundation uh, chains. So if that helps to give you an idea that you're probably going to need a very small amount um, compared to that. So I'm just going to go ahead and try 20 and see how that works. Okay, so this is how you make a single crochet foundation chain. If you need more help with this, I will link a tutorial. It isn't my tutorial, but it's the tutorial that I uh, like that explains how to do a single crochet foundation chain. Or you can just uh, YouTube search uh, on your own and find one that you like. So the way that you do it is you just chain two and then you go back through the first chain that you made, skipping the, the one closest to your hook, and you yarn over and pull up a loop. And then instead of yarning through both, you actually yarn over and pull through one, yarn over and then pull through both. And that gives us a total of three stitches. And then you're just going to keep doing this same kind of pattern where you skip the uh, stitch closest to your hook and you go back to the other one. But now you're going to be working under a whole stitch and not just a chain because you already created a single crochet. And then you'll yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and go through one, then yarn over and go through both. And like I said, you'll just continue that same pattern. So skip that stitch closest to you and go into the one that is uh, the second from your chain, from your uh, hook, go through the whole stitch and yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through one, yarn over and pull through both. So once again, we go in the stitch that is second from our chain, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through both. 
And uh, you know how many you have at the beginning because you chain two and then when you do that first stitch, that makes you have three. So then you can just, every time you do it after that, you'll have one more. Or you can obviously stop and count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. So uh, go ahead and continue until you have the length of chain that you're going to need. Um, and if you don't like to do a um, single crochet foundation row, then just go ahead and chain the length that you need and uh, meet me back and we will connect our little um, loop together. And then you'll just go around and do another single crochet uh, round on your own and I'll let you know when to do that. So go ahead and either chain the length that you're gonna need or single crochet foundation row the length that you're gonna need. Okay, so I finished my um, single crochet foundation chain and I decided I'm gonna make it for this crochet makes book. So what I did is I made it so that my chain is long enough to go the length of the cover and then flip down into the book and meet with the other end. So this is how long you want it to be so that it fits nicely um, the length of the cover and then inside of your book. Um, now we're going to connect to the beginning of our chain so you're going to want to make sure that you don't um, twist it or anything, which is a lot easier to do with this foundation chain than a normal chain. And then you're going to want to go in to the first spot and slip stitch. And just be extra careful, like I said, to make sure that you don't twist your chain. So go ahead and yarn over and pull through the loop on both sides so that you create a circle. Okay? If you did not do a um, foundation chain and you just did a regular chain, at this point go ahead and single crochet all the way around and meet me back. Um, before continuing on to the next step. So you're going to want to go ahead and make sure you have your green and your red ready as well um, before we get started on this next round. And then we're going to go ahead and we are going to chain three. If you would like to, you can work over your tail from uh, the beginning when you did your slip knot, or you can leave it and weave it in later, whatever suits you. Um, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to chain three with our working yarn. And this is going to be called our background color from here on out. So when I say to use our background color, I mean this color that you um, started with and wanted to use for your background. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work two more double crochets. So go ahead and work a double crochet into that next stitch and a double crochet into the third stitch. But when you get to the second uh, part of your double crochet on that third stitch, um, counting the chain as also a stitch. So we have our chain one and then we have two and then we have three. Okay. Uh, when you get halfway through your double crochet, instead of yarning over and pulling through these last two loops, you're going to yarn over in your green and then you're going to pull through. Or I'm sorry, you're going to yarn over in your um, orange and pull through. So go ahead and grab your orange and put it over your hook and pull it through those two loops. And then what I like to do when I'm bringing in the color for the first time is grab the tail of my new color that I'm bringing in and just give it a little um, knot onto the current color. And I'll work over this so that you won't see it, but that way I know that the beginning of it is secured nicely. So I just did a little double knot. So I have two double crochets and my chain three. So this counts as three double crochets and we've got our orange on our hook. So working over your um, background color and if you'd like to work over the tail, you can work over the tail as well. We are going to do six double crochets uh, in the same stitch. 
So yarn over and go into that next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. That's how you do a double crochet. We're gonna do six of those. So repeat that five more times in the same stitch. So there's two, three, four, five, and six. Oops. And there we go. So now that you have six stitches in your orange, we are going to take our hook out and we're going to put it into the first stitch of the cluster. So you can kind of pull up a little bit and hold on to that loop. And you're going to go back one, two, three, four, five, and six. And you're going to go into the first stitch of the cluster, the top of that stitch, just like you would uh, normally when double crocheting. So you're just going to go into the top of that stitch like you were going to stitch or like you were going to crochet into it. And you're going to um, pull your green. So go ahead and take your green and yarn over onto your hook. Um, you're going to pull it through this first stitch and the loop that we already had that we were working in. So just to show you again one more time, here's where we were in our sixth stitch. We take our hook out and go into the top of the first stitch that's orange. Then we put it back, put the loop back on our hook, and then we just place this green yarn over our hook and we are going to pull through both the loop, sorry, I just noticed I have picked up a little bit of extra strands from that other stitch. There we go. Uh, you're going to pull through both that loop and the loop from the beginning. So it kind of clusters this up for you. And then I'm going to stop for just a moment and tie my new green tail to my orange working yarn just so that I know that it'll be secured give it a little knot all right so then you have your green on your hook and this kind of clustered up. Okay, so now that we have our green on our hook, we are going to chain one, and then we're gonna pull up a loop in between each of the double crochets that are in this cluster. So you're gonna go after that first double crochet and you're going to yarn over and pull through. And you're just gonna do that in between every double crochet in this cluster. Just go through and yarn over and pull up a loop. And I think there's one more down there on that end. There we go. Okay, so when you get, um, you pull up your loop from in between each of these double crochets, you're leaving them on there. And then when you have them all on there, you're gonna yarn over and you're gonna pull through all of them. Okay. Then we're gonna chain one and we're going to grab our background color down here.
and we're gonna pull through our chain one up there. Then you can give this a little tug and you're gonna be working over your orange and your green. So now we're just gonna do three double crochets again. So make sure that you don't skip a stitch. You go into that stitch right next to um, your little pumpkin and work your first double crochet and work over the orange and green chains. Then you're gonna go ahead and work a double crochet in the next stitch. And you're going to work a double crochet in that third stitch from your pumpkin. And remember, when you get to that third stitch, you're not going to um, finish the third double crochet. You're going to do half of it so that you have these last two loops. Uh, and instead of yarning over and pulling through those last two loops, we are going to switch back to orange and yarn over in orange. Okay, and then you can pull through and then you finish that finishes those three double crochets out, but you have your orange on your hook. Then we're just going to repeat. So we're going to do six double crochets in the same stitch. And this is going to be our repeat for the whole half of the bookmark. So for half of the bookmark, we're just going to keep repeating um, three, three double crochets in our background color. And then six double crochets of orange, and then you take your hook out and you pull the green through. Um, and then you pull up a loop in between each of the double crochets. Pull through those, um, do a chain, chain one, and then pull your background color back through and then you just repeat it. So I'll walk you through this a few times. Right now I'm just working up the six um, double crochets in orange. Now I'm going to take my hook out, I'm going to put my hook back in to my first orange stitch, the top of it, and then back into my loop that I just took it out of. And then I'm going to grab my green and pull that through those two loops. Okay, then we're going to chain one. And then we're going to go through each in between, in between each stitch. And we're going to grab a loop and pull it up, but we're not going to do anything with it yet. We're just going to continue to do that in between each double crochet. So I want to make sure you can see that. These are your double crochets and I'm just pulling up a loop in between each one. And uh, you're just going to keep doing that. You're going to do that until you get your double crochets from in between each stitch. And it can be a little bit difficult to um, get in between the last two stitches just take your time just take a second to do it i need to pull some more green yarn out all right and then i had one more loop to pull up And then you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through all of them and then you're going to chain one and then you're going to switch back to your background color put that over your hook and pull through and you can give your green a little tug if it stretched out while you were doing that so that it's nice and tight and then like i said before you're just going to crochet right over your orange and your green and you're gonna do two or three double crochets. So in the next stitch, we're gonna do a background color double crochet. Then in the stitch after that, we're going to do in our background color, a second double crochet. And then lastly, in our background color, we'll do one more double crochet, but we're only going to do it halfway and then we are going to switch to orange and pull that orange through. And then we're going to work six um, double crochets in our orange in that next stitch. So this is going to be the repeat and you're just going to keep doing this 
until you've done half of your bookmark. Um, half of your bookmark has pumpkins or however much of your bookmark you'd like to have pumpkins. Um, you could do the whole thing. You could do just a small section of it. Um, however, however many pumpkins you want there to be. If you do um, half of it with pumpkins, then you can have the whole front um, part that sticks out have pumpkins on it and then um, the inside not have pumpkins so that it'll lay flat on the inside. So that is up to your preference um, how you would like to do that. So after you've done your six double crochets in orange, we're going to go ahead and move our, uh, take our hook out, go in through that top of that first stitch and then back through the loop that our hook was in. And then we're just going to grab that green yarn and pull it through both. Chain one, and then go through and pull up a loop from in between each of these double crochets. So this is going to be your repeat. You can go ahead and keep doing this until you get um, the desired amount of pumpkins to do your bookmark. So go ahead and keep doing this until you get the desired amount of pumpkins that you would like for your bookmark length, and I will meet you back. If you need help with any of this again, um, just go ahead and rewind and you can watch how to make your pumpkins. So once you have finished the amount of pumpkins that you're gonna want to the length that you're gonna want them uh, to cover, we're gonna go ahead and we are going to um, I'm finishing right now on a pumpkin. I just finished chaining uh, one at the top of my pumpkin and I'm going to grab my background color and yarn over and pull through just like I normally would. But now that we are done with our pumpkins, we can go ahead and tie these off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work one double crochet in that first stitch after and I'm going to work over my um, orange and green just like normal. And you can go ahead and give your orange and your green a tug to keep them nice and tight. And then what I'm going to do is before I continue on to my next stitch. I'm going to go ahead and tie these off. So go ahead and grab your scissors and cut your orange and your green yarn. And you can move that aside because you're not going to need it anymore. And then we're going to knot these to the background color uh, of working yarn. So go ahead and just grab both strands of your um, yellow and your or your orange and your green. And then just put a little double knot with your background color. And then you can work right over these tails if you want to, or you can sew them in. That's up to you. So now that we've got those double knotted, I'm going to go ahead and yarn over and um, do my next double crochet in the next stitch. And I'm just going to work right over those tails. See? You don't even see them. And the less sewing in we have to do, the better, in my opinion. So, up to you. If you would like to sew them in, then obviously you can do that as well. So, after we do this, we are going to go ahead and finish off. So, the way that we started was we started with three double crochets. So, we're going to end with three double crochets over here as well. Uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to first cut these um, so that they end at the same spot that my double crochets end and you don't have to worry about those anymore and then I'm going to slip stitch down into the next stitch just like this and then I'm going to chain one just because when I pull out that's going to create a nice knot for me and I know that it'll be sturdy and then I can go ahead and I can cut my yarn. And then if you pull up on your hook and then give this a nice tug, 
you created a nice knot there and that is all secured and it makes a nice little um, dip down, a nice little um, steady decline right there and I think it looks really nice. Then you can go ahead and grab your darning needle or if you don't want to, you can use your crochet hook to weave in your tail. Um, I'm gonna use a darning needle and we're just going to go back up into where we just came out of and kind of weave this tail in underneath of our stitches. So I'm going to go up through the middle of this and I want to keep my, um, if it's going to show, I want it to show on the back, not the front. So let's try that again. So here's what it looks like on the back and here's what it looks like on the front. My darning needle hardly shows, which means my yarn going up will hardly show. And then I'm just going to run it back and forth a couple times in this spot. And then I'm going to run it through these stitches right here so that it's nice and hidden and kind of pop it out down here and now I can go ahead and cut it because it is nicely secured and hidden and woven in and you are not going to see it now and then there is no tail and you can do the same thing where we started over on this side with um, our um, beginning and then you have your bookmark. I have a little tail to trim at the front there. There we go. And then this is how you use your bookmark. So let's say I wanted to go to this page. All I do is slide this over the front of my book. Like so. And then I have this pretty um, decorative pumpkin bookmark on the outside. And then on the inside, I just have my chain. And then it barely bumps out your pages at all. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I would love to see your pumpkin bookmark creations. If you would like to tag me on Instagram, I'm on Instagram at uh, Nova underscore gnome. Or you can find the link to my Instagram if you go to my YouTube channel and up at the top where my banner is, at the top there is little icons you can click and the Instagram icon, icon is clickable there. Uh, alternatively, in the description box, I also have my email, which is novanomecreations at gmail.com and you are always welcome to send me pictures of your creations there. Uh, other than that, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and that you will hit that subscribe button if you haven't already because there will be plenty more of this type of content in the future. I hope everybody has a great day and I will see you on the next one. Bye guys!